That's an awful lot of swans. I'm in East Ross, east of Inverness, next stop Norway. This place is an absolute haven for wildlife. This morning I went out with a local goose guide. If you want to turn a large skein of geese and bring them over guns, you need to know how to speak goose. <laughs> Just blow it very gently. If you blow it too hard, it makes a distress call and just flare off. Or if you have pinks coming in, you sound just... It's more like a chocolatey call. And what is the distress call? What if, you, if you heard them making it? The sea's just over on the other side, I believe. We've got the wind coming into us this way. So we're laying the decoys out and head to it that way. Because he is a farmer, James is well placed to watch the geese here. He observes to conserve and has strict rules for his shooters. There's, there are less geese coming in here. I mean, farming practices have changed. I mean, year, 20 years ago, there was a lot of spring barley grown here. Now there's a lot of oilseed rape, winter wheat, winter oats. So they have less stubbles to go on, but uh, we've still got a fair number in. I mean, 20 years ago, we maybe had 40,000 on the law. Now it's maybe 10 or 15. It varies from year to year. You're very careful about bags and things like we that. We shoot a brace per gun and we stop. It's as simple as that. A lot of people go a lot further than that, don't they? Not necessarily good people. Mm -hmm. Well, that's their choice, but I don't approve of that. The arrival of the grey geese in autumn is one of the great British wildlife events. Hundreds of thousands of birds travel thousands of miles from their breeding grounds in the subarctic. They will stay here until around May. Around here, they don't really cause much of a problem for the farmers until the spring drillings. But for local tourism during the shooting season, they can be a real boon. Many people travel much further than the birds to get here to come shooting. There's something sort of wild and, and natural about geese, which is a huge attraction, especially to some of the French people. And it's uh, the, the beauty and, and the, the unspoilt areas they get to shoot in. They're, they're well away from, from industrial areas and all the rest of it and it's just, just a very beautiful place to be. You had a good morning, didn't you? <laughs> very good indeed, thanks, yeah. It was indeed. And we, that was we, all part of the magic, seeing those geese? Yeah, it's seen the volume of geese and, and the fact that, you know, you get your shot, you've always got a good chance of getting a shot, no guarantees, uh, and, you know, have your few and then leave them alone. Yeah, they're there for again. And does everyone go away satisfied? Pretty much so, yeah. Pretty much so. Back at the field, it has been over an hour and not much has come over. Then our luck changes. Just as we begin packing up, the geese and hooper swans start moving. Very exciting. We've had quite a few flying over. Uh, some of them very high and quite a few of them over in the field behind us. Lots of swans as well. It's, uh, lots of action but nothing. No shoot up. A couple of shots down over there but uh, not much over here. So. When it begins to quieten down, James drives up and suggests we go back to Loch Eye, where the birds overnight. At the loch, we see geese lift from the surrounding stubble. All that goes over us is a wedge of swans. I prefer a pageant of swans. It's been an amazing morning. It seems like a long way away from the dry corridors of Westminster, where I spend my time as the director of shooting for the Countryside Alliance, trying to convince MPs that lead isn't the devil's work. Goose shooting is an incredibly accessible sport, and every shooter should try it. For more information on Lackey's Guiding Services, email him at ls at highlandsporting.com. For more information on the Countryside Alliance's shooting campaign, visit us at www.countryside-alliance.org.uk.